Okay, it's July 24th, 2010, and my name is Bill Telfer. I live in Elwood, Illinois, and today we have been dealing with extreme humidity. And it's been, we've had 85% humidity, it feels like 100%. And um, right now we're, we're just dealing with it with a little uh, window unit of an air conditioner. Our house is too old to have central air, but that's okay. It's doing a good job with the help of some fans. And uh, right now, uh, there is an imminent thunderstorm. It looks like it's going to be a really violent thunderstorm coming. And that's probably less than an hour away. Um, I thought I would, oh, I see some lightning through the window uh, flashing. You might even hear some thunder coming up. That'd be kind of nice for the video. I chose to start out my video in this uh, pool room, which I also um, use as a place, there's the thunder, uh, to do my hobby, which is uh, 16 millimeter uh, movie collecting. I, I love movies, and that's, well, the, the first thing uh, that I'm going to deal with on the list is besides the obvious of my wife and my children I love movies I love old movies I love old black and white movie serials that's what I'm, I've really kind of rediscovered the last couple of years and uh, friends and family and I we, we've kind of started a little uh, 16 millimeter movie club and we, we dark and we turn our parlor downstairs into a little movie theater and we crank up the old 60 millimeter projector and we uh, enjoy lovely nights just watching these old films. Um, that kind of leads me to what is in my pocket. Well, something that I carry around with me all the time are three stones. Now, I'll get closer to the camera here. Let's see if I can get them on. Here we go. This is a lapis lazuli, and this is a bloodstone. My wife, uh, Marge, got these for me several years ago for kind of good luck, health, that kind of thing. She got it from a, a rock shop. <laughs> and this is a piece of what seems to be like quartz, almost in a arrowhead spear shape, though it's probably naturally created and I got this while we were on vacation with our kids in 1993 in Rocky Mountain National Park and I, I found it lying on the ground and I at the campsite we were at and I, I picked it up I, I carried it in my pocket ever since I have a picture of that trip which I can show you quickly because it shows our whole family during a very nice vacation Nice hiking, camping, vacation. And I'll kind of just point us out here. That's me. That's my son, Rob, who is now a slam poet. That's uh, my son, Dan, who's a stand-up comedian in Chicago. My stepson, Keith, who now edits uh, commercials for television. And right next to my wife, Marge, there, is my stepson Rick who sadly we lost in 2001 and this leads me to the uh, what do you fear question and funny thing after having lost him I have said this to many people I also lost during that time my ability to fear things and I'm not kidding I don't have any other explanation for it but that I don't fear anything anymore it's absolutely true and here's a nice picture of the boys when they were younger at uh, Kohler Andre State Park another great camp out I believe this was 1988 and from 
left to right, it's Keith and Rob and Rick and Dan. Now, as far as what makes me laugh, well, um, my, my kids have a great sense of humor. They make me laugh. Uh, some of them are making a good living at making people laugh. I think what I'm going to talk about is the conclusion of my video is a dream I had in the early hours of today which unbelievably it made me laugh. I dreams I don't know how many dreams I've had that actually made me laugh while I was in the dream. Maybe never and that's what made this so memorable and I'll just try to describe it very quickly because, well, really that's all I remember from, just sort of the, the end, the very end of the dream, it was attached to some big epic thing that we all have those epic dreams and they, you know, they amount to nothing, but towards the end of the dream I had a goal where I was um, friends with this character, a character from TV, um, who actually it was no, it was a cartoon character, and I don't want to violate any you know copyright, but it was, um, it was a a cartoon robot that was, and it was as it is always with dreams. And I know generally, you know, when you say you want to tell someone their dream, it's like oh please, but this made me laugh today. So, and it's it's really an unusual dream. I had to take from this friend of mine in the dream, this cartoon friend, three big bags, which I would I would describe them as like the size of, like if you took a box of cereal, big box of cereal and pulled the wax paper uh, bag of cereal from inside it, they're about that size. And he said I had to go find what the value of these baseball cards were. There were three of these bags and they were filled with baseball cards, supposedly. And so I'm walking down this street, which in my hometown of Joliet, which it was Larkin Avenue in Joliet, and usually that's a very busy, built-up section of town with houses and businesses. At this particular stretch of it, in my dream, it was just barren, kind of with like dirt hills along the side. There were no houses, and even though I knew in my head, oh, this is Larkin Avenue, it didn't look like the real Larkin Avenue. We all know how dreams are. I'm sorry if I'm going off on tangents. It's the dream tangent. You can't get away with it when you're trying to describe a dream. Anyway, I'm walking along and I'm looking for this expert to tell me how much these baseball cards are worth. And I'm thinking, I can't go to a stranger and say, oh, these are baseball cards. How many were? I, it does, I can't see through these bags. I don't even know if there are really baseball cards in these bags. So I said, well, my friend's going to be mad, but I'm going to have to tear one open and see if it's baseball cards. So I tear it open, and sure enough, the thing is just loaded with baseball cards, kind of spilled all over haphazardly, not in any smaller bags or anything. They're just loose like, like a kid's collection of baseball cards would be. So I said, well, they are baseball cards. I continue on my way, and I find the expert who's sitting at the top well, not at the very top, but near, like on the side of the hill near the top in a school desk, an old kind of metal school desk. And it's Michael J. Fox, the actor Michael J. Fox, who I do not know in real life, but he was the supposed collectible expert in my dream. So I climb up the hill and I say to him, I need you to tell me if these baseball cards are worth anything. And uh, he just kind of acts like, oh, they're not, they're, they're not. And then he sees that two of them are in unopened bags. He goes, oh, so they're in the bags, huh? And I go, yeah. And I'm thinking, well, these are going to be worth a lot of money. I hand them to him, hand them all three bags, even the open one. He takes another one, like the second one, and rips it open too. And I'm going, like, what the? Why are you ripping it open? And he just goes, uh, yeah, it doesn't make any difference. These aren't worth anything. <laughs> I just found it so funny. I, I started laughing, and I think my laughing actually woke me up. 
I'm 60 years old and I've never, to my memory, have I ever awakened during a dream. So I have no idea what that dream means, probably nothing. Um, I fear Michael J. Fox ruining my collectibles maybe. Anyway, that's my video.